zero. So hello everyone. Uh, this is the weekly Docker-based Jenkins quick start example for GSOC 2023. And today we have Ashutosh, our contributor, Beviento, mentor, and maybe we'll see Jean-Marc later on. Thanks a lot. Uh, go ahead, Ashutosh, wanted to share with us what you worked on lately. So you uh, shared with me, yeah, your repo. Can you go to the, uh, go to the second repository? Uh, yes. This one? No. Uh, maybe we can okay. uh, maybe we can go to Gitpod directly. So we'll get an example if it's working or not. Okay. So you would like me to try that? I can share my screen if you don't mind. Go ahead, please. can see my screen, right? I can, yes. So I created a custom uh, Docker image uh, uh, integrating uh, uh, the list of plugins we'll install. Uh, I added the, uh, let me, second list. I added all the default plugins that get installed when the startup comes. Mm -hmm. And when we run Docker, It should get us to the Jenkins startup with connected agent, as you did in your PR. But this one also, Docker Compose file is easy for a beginner to read. Okay. So as John Mark suggested that we can hide the complexity in the Docker image. I tried yeah. to do that. Let's see if it's working or not. What is suspense? <laughs> oh, and you've got the Docker agent. Wow. Nice progress. Well done. Thank you. Okay, it's connected. Great. Ah, kudos. That's exactly what we were looking for. Uh, that's cool. That's good news. <laughs> Thank you. Now, for the bad news. <laughs> no, just kidding. But um, I saw that you made an image uh, and posted it on your Docker Hub uh, repo uh, registry, whatever the correct name is. That's cool. But <laughs> where is um your docker file is it part of this repo yes right now docker it's file the one it is just here. next to docker compose yes yes okay cool um what i was wondering is is it necessary to host uh this image uh in docker hub or could we just use uh, Docker Compose build instead of yes. just we can up, build on you know, the host machine too? Yes. Uh, I don't know if that would be quicker or not. I don't know, yeah, yeah. but people may be wondering where, even if the Docker file is there, uh, where is the source of uh, this Docker image? How can I see what's inside? So I think that build instead of uh, just up could be better. Uh, yeah, Bergento, what's your, yeah, what's your idea about that? Yeah, I think I agree uh, to use build instead of just 
uh, using real image. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's say I have another repo uh, where I do the two things at the same time. In fact, you know, I reference um, a local Docker file with build in my Docker Compose, but I also have a GitHub action that builds and pushes to Docker Hub registry um, the image that corresponds. You know, each time I make a modification in the repo, it is built and pushed to the Docker registry, just in case there would be another use case um, so that I could share this image. So I don't know if that's, that's not mandatory. I don't know if I made myself understandable, but maybe you could use um, also a GitHub action that builds and pushes to your Docker Hub registry your image, but that's not mandatory at all. That's just if you want to discover uh, this part of GitHub action, but frankly, not mandatory at all for this project because it even doesn't use Jenkins. If uh, you're interested in discovering that, I can give you a link to something that already works for one of my repos. But if you don't want to do that, fine with me. Okay, Shukash? Yes. You can give me a link, no, I'll right. take a look. Okay, uh, let me put in the note that your example was fully working. Uh, I was also That's experimenting cool. with uh, creating uh, SSH key pairs, uh, new SSH key pairs uh, uh, for every every time Docker we use Docker Compose up. But I was having some problems with it. If I generate it on the host machine, then it will be able to I will be able to pass the keys to both agent and controller. But if I generate it on a controller, I can't pass it to agent. And with Docker Compose file, I, I can't. And generate it on the host machine. So okay. I was. John Mark suggested to experiment if you uh, if I can generate keys too. So I was trying. So do you know any better way to if I uh, if that can work? I have never thought of that. I never experimented with that. I have no idea for the time being. Bear Viento, would you have any input? I don't have currently. Yeah, I never was thought thinking that. that's clever. I was thinking we can uh, yeah, generate uh, key before Docker Compose file, so it will get two commands. We'll yeah. have to use two commands then. I think uh, if you want to use Gitpod, I think there is some kind of hook uh, that is called before running the Docker Compose. So maybe you could put something in that place. Uh, but I don't see anything Gitpod related for the time being in your repo. Is there something I haven't spotted yet? No, it's just something that works with Gitpod, but there is no Gitpod configuration, right? Yes. No, it's not right now. OK, so maybe uh, you could have a look. Are you trying to find the documentation? And the compose start. OK. Uh, and now I will try to find the link to the action. No, my first. Okay. Docker image. Yes, I found the link.
so what was I saying? Uh, yeah. Uh, Action and so in the documentation I put the um, link to a working GitHub action that would do more or less the same thing and I put it in the chat too just if you want to experiment with that uh, I was uh, also wondering if we will need uh, the persona uh, after this, if we hide the complexity in the Docker file, we might get to build only one. If it's for beginners, it will he or she will only look at Docker Compose file and build with it. If it's for yeah, or uh, even some of them wouldn't even uh, <laughs> look at the Docker Compose file. You just click on the Git pod button yes. and get started. So yeah, it's for the. I don't know if it was if it was the first or the second one, but yes, of course, some people would just want to have something up and running in seconds. So these kind of people uh, will benefit from something that works out of the box, even if the complexity is in the Docker Compose or in the Docker file or somewhere else, as long as it works for them. So that that's cool. Uh, so what was I about to write? Should find and share. What? Ah, yeah, Gitpod, uh, Gitpod's documentation about pre-hook. Uh, so we can generate SSH keys before launching with Docker Compose. Uh, once again, uh, this part is not mandatory. Uh, it's nice to have, but uh, yeah not mandatory in any way <sighs> that's cool uh that's good news in fact you know i was wondering how we could progress and you made it during the weekend <laughs> that's cool now uh what would be maybe even better um now that you have your default plugins uh would be to install the jcask oh, maybe it's already JCASC. part of it yeah, of course, yes. but it wouldn't have worked without Jcask. My bad. Yes. <laughs> um, so one other thing you could add before we could call this sample complete, uh, maybe would be to have a default it. job working uh, when you start Jenkins. And unfortunately, uh, jobs hand, um, aren't handled by the Jcask plugin. It's more roots, more low level. Do you know how we can add a job to a newly created Jenkins instance just with code? Not right now, I don't know. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Sorry, that was not a tricky question or, you know, I just wanted to know if you knew that. Uh, it's not elegant, as far as I know, Bevian to tell me if I'm wrong, but, the only way I know is just to create on a Jenkins instance somewhere, even in this one, for example, a job, then have a look at the file system and copy the files which are defined in the jobs part of the Jenkins instance running and paste it somewhere into your uh, repo, you know, so that when you start um, a new Jenkins somewhere, it will see that there is something as uh, there is a job configured already in the instance and put it in the working jenkins instance so it's just a matter of finding where the jobs are defined on the file system copy one and paste it into your docker context so that next time you start uh, jenkins with docker compose jenkins finds the job and shows it to the end user 
Um, did I make myself clear or did I just muddy the water? Yeah. Can you explain it again? I didn't get it completely. Yeah. In fact, um, Jenkins has this configuration in the file system. There is, uh, most of the time is slash var slash Jenkins home. And in that repo, you'll find the configuration of Jenkins. You'll find uh, the plugins that Jenkins is using. You'll find, um, it's another directory, but you find the workspaces. You'll find the jobs. You'll find just about everything within Jenkins. So for your instance, for example, you could enter into the running container and have a look at what's uh, running in slash uh, var, I think, yeah, v a r slash Jenkins underscore home, and you should find lots of interesting information. With your running instance, for example, in Gitpod, you could create a new job, you know, for example, a freestyle or a pipeline job, whatever, and then have a look in the subdirectories and try to find in the subdirectories where the jobs are defined. And once you know where the jobs are defined, you could try to copy the subdirectories where the jobs are and paste it. When I say in your Docker context, I mean in your repo, which happens to be your Docker context because there's a Docker file, Docker Compose and so on, okay? And next time you restart, then Jenkins should be able to find that there is already a job defined. So it will add it in the user interface and let the user interact with it. So I think the first thing to do is to create a job within your running Jenkins instance and then have a look at the file system. And if um, you don't manage for the time being to um, put a job, a defined job into your uh, Docker instance, that's not a problem. As soon as you understand how to create a job, how to find it on the file system, that's already a nice first step. Then if you are stuck, uh, just let us know and we will work uh, with you um, on the next step, which is how do I replicate this job into my Docker context so that I can have it running as soon as the user starts with Docker Compose. I have a working example, I think, um, but there is no documentation associated with it. So maybe it's a little difficult to read, but I will give you the link nonetheless. But please ask for some help if that's too complicated. Uh, for you, which is perfectly fine. Frankly, I had to scratch my head for quite a long time before understanding how all of that works. And I think I didn't find a really good documentation about that, by the way. So that's perfectly normal to struggle <laughs> with that part of it's the project. Yeah. Oh, John Mark, you're there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice to see you. And yeah, I'm sorry for being fun. late. Yeah. Bad John Mark. No, just kidding. Uh, you've got all the right to do what you want to do today. If I'm not mistaken, it's your birthday, right? No, it's tomorrow. <laughs> Damn it! I was wrong. No Sorry problem. No that. problem. No problem. Here, I, I wanted trying. to add. I, I joined the conversation late, so uh, I don't know everything. Uh, just for the discussion about uh, preloading uh, jobs. Uh, this is an ugly workaround, the technique uh, that Bruno is explaining. Uh, it works. Currently, Jenkins doesn't have a solution for that. The paying version has uh, these kind of solutions. And the technique that Bruno described is really the way to go to bootstrap. Uh, there is one difference, though, uh, is that Ashutosh is using a volume for his Jenkins directory. Yeah, but there are other techniques that can be uh, that can be used. So currently, it's it's a lot of exploring, understanding, uh, and understanding the uh, internals of Jenkins Ashutosh. So, uh, uh, so did we decide that this was the next step in automating? I'm afraid Where we decided we? it was, yes. So we could consider uh, the first example complete. So uh, I wanted uh, to have a job, yeah. 
Yeah, well, no problem with that. Did I miss something that there was activity during the weekend on the repository? Yes, you missed the, the best part. Uh, Ashutosh has a working example of Jenkins running with a configured agent, nothing to do on the end user side, just enter admin butter, maybe something like that. And boom, you've got a working Jenkins instance uh, well with done. default plugins. Yeah. I, well I followed done. your advice, John Mark, to hide the complexity in Docker file. Uh, uh, well done, well done. Great. Um, is it, it, it's in your repository, right? Yes, yes. It's a separate branch. I'll make the PR today. Uh, okay, you you have it there. So uh, I have the link in the chat. So it's normal that I didn't see it, or did I miss it somewhere, or is it the channel? I'm not. Did you no, did no, you I... raise my attention on it? No. No, I just uploaded it like an hour ago. So. Okay. Good. I well was done. So on it offline. A... So. Right. So uh, let me know when uh, we can have a look. Uh, to it and um, I'll make a PR of, of today. Good, good, well done. Well, I, I missed that important news, so very good. And so now I understand. Next step proposed by Bruno is having um, a job available. Yeah, uh, th I think this is very good. Yeah, that could be interesting. I, um, Ashutosh wanted I was, to say something. I was also working on the, uh, you uh, recommended to work on generating separate key keys for uh, while we were having chat on Gitter. You suggested in a tip to generate keys, separate keys. So I tried to do, do that, but I was having problems with it. Uh, if uh, I generate it on the controller, how do I uh -huh. get it to the agent, the public key? And if I generate it on host machine, I'll have to uh, use another command instead. I can't do it in Docker Compose file itself. Right. Um, uh, uh, good. Now, I'm, I, I don't have the overview where we're standing, and this is my fault because I came late. Uh, do we have a list of pending problems or items being worked on? So there is I don't no think just so. okay. But here, let's I'll I'll have a look to the automation of Ashutosh. This is going to push today. And uh and I assume you're going to preload a job. That's the next step, right? That's the goal. Okay, good. Well, this this I can understand in my small head. Uh, that that looks good. And um, maybe we could use uh, the GitHub issues to to list the pending questions and uh, problems. This is um, because some we're going to put aside. We're going to do that later. Uh, so uh, and, and maybe then on the issues, uh, we can add tips or experiment uh, with the solutions. Yep, sure. So Ashutosh, you could create some uh, GitHub is issues, but we could also do them, uh, Jean-Marc, Merviento, or myself, uh, so we don't forget anything uh, before the next meeting. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe we could also uh, just thinking loud and uh, stop uh, babbling. Uh, the the question, interesting question that Ashutosh raised about why did his RSA key not work? Uh, open a ticket with it so that I can add to there the result of my experimentation. I need to be honest. I forgot everything that I did on Friday, so I don't remember what the conclusions were. So I'm 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 ashamed. Shouldn't it's been be a busy rushed. weekend. Yes. But the workaround, as far as I remember, is that we're going to use ED keys, which are shorter, easier to to manage. Yes, uh, yeah. you mentioned that I, my key was not working. 
your particular yeah. key? And did I generate an equivalent key in Gitpod, um, which uses the Maybe sign? a longer one. I think you show the 4096 default key, Jean-Marc. Yeah. This one And worked. I think Ashutosh one was smaller. Yeah, the uh, default one. Yeah. Yes. I, I I'm using uh, 4096 uh, since years. Uh, this this length, I don't know, but here this is not a critical issue. No, it but it's better if puzzle. we understand why <laughs> it works. Well, it yeah, work. could help a couple of people, but I don't want to waste too much time. Uh, yeah. Interesting puzzles. But... Okay, yeah. go ahead. Uh, what, yes, yeah, what you missed also, uh, Jean-Marc, is that Ashutosh used for the time being um, an image he built and pushed on his Docker Hub registry. And we suggested that he uh, uses Docker Compose build instead of relying on yeah. an image. Yeah, on the yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. You know how to and do that, as... Ashutosh? Yes, uh, I've done it before. Well, yeah, okay. Um, making the first Docker Compose file during proposal. Right. Otherwise, I and can't you... reproduce what you're doing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, yes. And we also proposed as an optional bonus to continue to push, to build and push the, the image to Docker uh, thanks to a GitHub action, but not mandatory at all. It's not the main target of the project. It just just in case, you know, if you get bored sometime, you've got five minutes to lose, go ahead and try that. And I gave a link to an example that works uh, for me just in case. Uh, I, I had also a note. This is where the GitHub issues might help. Is So we're uh, pinning the versions of the containers. Yep. Uh, we should use, uh, oh, does it work? We should use uh, Dependabot. Does Dependabot check the container versions? Uh, I'm not so sure he can do that, in fact. Uh, I, I think that Jenkins project use update CLI for this particular job. I'm, I'm not so sure Dependabot can do that. But yes, of course, that would be nice to have Dependabot on this project. But the thing is, uh, his target is kind of limited. It doesn't handle lots of different um, source files like Docker Compose or Docker files. I'm not so sure he can do that. On the other hand, uh, update CLI is super um, smart, uh, but also very difficult to implement. I know you heard me previously rant about the regex uh, <laughs> that it uses. So I don't know, that could be interesting, but I'm not so sure we have the time to use update CLI in the coming weeks, maybe no, but in September just or so. Note, it. Note that, that this is a nice thing to do to improve. Yeah, uh, I will check if Dependabot can do that. We can steal scripts from the infra team. Yeah, yeah of course. Them. Anyway, so is it okay if I, I create these kind of issues so that we don't forget that? Uh, Please these... do so. Yes, yes. Ashutosh, you're okay with that? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Hey, you've been busy in quarter of an hour. <laughs> I've been doing well. That's good. Uh, Jean-Marc, why are you there? And I should have showed us something on Gitpod. Um, it works out of the box without having configured anything. So maybe we should do something on the repo to make their experience uh, more seamless, or is it a waste of time? Um, how seamless should it be? Uh, normally, uh, and this is a question to Ashutosh, uh, did we have to create um, a Gitpot YAML file, a configuration file? No, not right now. I didn't create anything. No, I didn't. I didn't either. You just have a, a command line on the project, yes. and you do a Docker uh, Docker compose up. Yes, yes. Oh yeah, I have a I have a question. 
Uh, Ashutosh, are you using Docker dash compose or are no, you using, using Docker space? Space, space. Space. So, so it's a more recent you're version. Not, yeah. You're not an old an old fox like me. Okay. So because <laughs> I have to change my 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 habits there. Okay, yes, good. I, so was we also, are uh, I was also using dash while I was working on the proposal, then I shifted to space. Yeah, yeah well okay. done. Well done. Not yeah, to show yeah, that yeah. the history. I think it started as a separate product, then it became a plugin, then it became part of Docker, I guess. Yeah. And I know the chap who wrote it quite well. Nicolas Delouf. Oh. He, he wrote he wrote that part. Do you know him? I don't know. Bruno, do you met him? No. He's I've not met I no, no, yeah, I know. Uh, not everybody's perfect. Uh, <laughs> just for the little story, just for the little story, I Go hate ahead. myself for doing that. But Nicolas Delouf is is uh, a very funny guy and makes great presentations. And it was at the time uh, before Kubernetes picked up, and uh, so there was Docker Swarm mm -hmm. to create clusters of application. And he made a conference to. Uh, uh, to show the principles and so on. And so he had a running cluster and say, now we're going to make one of the nodes fail. And at that moment, he takes a helmet and a, a circle saw and cuts the Raspberry Pi in two. Just <laughs> now I think it's destroyed. And so that was a huge laugh in the complete and indeed, and so we watched the cluster having this catastrophic failure. But there were things that were still working, some not. And, and so that was while he was he was cutting. And then showing the cluster. Uh, uh, so so we're this is a Europe. kind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nicola de Luf, yeah. I know. Yeah, that. Damien already told me this story. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hilarious. Good, good. Uh, I apologize for interrupting, but I like. No, that's funny. Stories. We don't have to be serious all the time. And uh, giving some anecdotes and um, background stories uh, is really interesting to me. Thanks a lot for sharing that, Jean-Marc. I had a question and I forgot about it, <laughs> unfortunately. Sorry. No, no, my fault. I'm getting old and forgetting things all the, all the time. Uh, I have a question for Shutosh, but maybe that will be. Are you still maintaining your journal? on uh, uh, what you do or so? I, oh, I always forgot about it. I'll maintain it. I try to maintain yeah. it. Can you, uh, <laughs> can I give you a tip there? So I think it's yes, a great please. idea, a great idea. Uh, and uh, you can do it as a journal, but it will be easier if you create one single file with that mm -hmm. and you add just a date and you put the current date at the top of the document. So you don't need to scroll all the time. So you see, you have a reverse, reverse. order yeah. where, yeah. and you can also write there uh, the problems that you face, the questions you have or the things that you have been exp exploring. Okay. I do that all the time in my projects because the first reader of that is myself, a couple of, a couple of weeks older. And then I rem oh yeah, I was doing that. And then I look there and pasting your URLs of, of things. Uh, now you can do it formally. I did that, I did that, I did that because you're communicating with us as mentor. But here we, we're between uh, here, well-educated people. So you can also uh, put your personal notes in there. So that would be a little bit like we would look over your shoulder and we say, hey, this is something I already said. So the journal is important, very useful. The form you're using right now is, is uh, not handy at all. Just a tip. So do I make separate one like on Google Sheets and share a link? Uh, Part of the repo is fine, I guess. In the repo oh. is good. You just do one single uh, markdown document. Okay. 
This is my tip, but but you creating one file per day, yes. and then you forget updating it and uh, the, and these kind of things. So yes, I do need to change. I always forgot about it. Make it make it more uh, uh, useful. Yes, and and make it a convert and conversation to your. Uh, to your doppelganger, uh, to your your alter ego, or yourself watching you work working. Do you understand yeah. what I want to say with that, Ashutosh? Yes, yes. We're getting into weird things, right? So, but uh... yeah, and 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 be kind to your older self. Uh, so <laughs> yourself from one month from now will be happy to read the notes and say, "Oh, that's why I did it that way." Can be shorthand too, but uh, yeah. Uh, Experiment that technique. Yep. Um, I talk too much. I know it's an ugly hack, you know, copying and pasting the jobs into the Docker context or a nice workaround. It's... I don't know the level of the thing. I had another uh, target a few months ago. I wanted to do it thanks to job GSL, but lots of people came to me and said, "No, no, no! Don't ever touch." that plugin forget about it it just doesn't work uh sure. have you experimented with that no i i didn't um the uh, job dsl works doesn't work uh there, there are different opinions uh on that uh it exists yeah. uh, at this stage uh I would not look in, into that. The job DSL is interesting for huge professional systems to create the seed uh, jobs and where you you need a higher reliability and where the amount of jobs is very large and can change quite a lot. So uh, job DSL is more for professional settings. Um, I, the alternative I would look rather than copying, but this is opening another can of worms, is using the Jenkins CLI, uh, the command line interface uh, and sending commands to the Jenkins. It doesn't fit what we're planning to do here. No. Mm -mm. With one single command. Uh, I, I had a similar result. Uh, um, it, it can be debated. Uh, I, I used Ansible quite a lot uh, for that. It allows you to tweak the files, but I was not using uh, uh, Docker. So a long story short, uh, Bruno and Ashutosh, let's go with copy, copying the, the jobs. Uh, designing good-looking jobs that are representative enough to show the principles uh, at this part of the project uh, is good enough. And let's do that. Getting into defining a good job that doesn't require connecting to GitHub or, or these kind of things, because you could use... Uh, uh, a small local, they're thinking about what this initial job should be. It requires already a lot of energy. Then looking into what tool we're going to use to create it. So I'm more interested in the content of the demo. This is my, my point of view. I agree with that. What other things? Bevento, what do you think? I also agree with that. Because uh, last week I, I was experimenting about JPDSL, but I think it's quite oh. hard to set up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you getting gray hairs because you're trying to make JPDSL work? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I looked at it and run away and ran away. <laughs> I, I... Okay, so good, good input. Uh... I'm interested, but I think you're you're further than me in your experience. Go ahead, in fact, Brian. I didn't go uh, farther than reading the documentation because I had questions and, and I asked questions to uh, Mark, for example, or Damien Dupotel, and they told me, stop right now and forget about job DSL. Yeah, it's, it's getting nowhere. It, it works, it fills. Uh, there are other things that I hear about that will solve this problem. So Ashutosh, uh, one of your next challenges is to find the right job to add to the running Jenkins instance. Jean-Marc or Berviento, would you have any input on where to look on the documentation to get some inspiration? Or uh, maybe it doesn't exist in the documentation. That's something that should come out of your head. Go ahead, Jean-Marc. No, I, 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 want the, I want the others, but I have some, some quick easy jobs do you want me to go to say or or maybe i should yeah, have ideas yeah <laughs> i should you have you, first. you have ideas i don't have much ideas about job right now okay uh i think they're very easy uh pipelines it can be done uh, and pipelines that do very stupid things, like saying hello world and uh, showing things, having uh, uh, timeouts, or not timeouts, but delays in it. So just showing some activity uh, that, that it runs. So it's not the full CI implementation where you have uh, 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 a Git repository, when you push to the Git repository, a job is triggered. Uh, this is this is the second yeah. scenario. Uh, I, I don't think that we discussed about the personas, but we, we have one where the persona wants to, what is this Jenkins about? How does it look like? A simple job that does hello hello world with a, a delay that you see. I can start it by hand and then I have to wait. You can even introduce a random failure. Uh, uh, and it's so uh, be creative, but a very simple pipeline job that does not require any dependencies. That's a problem. Uh... Uh, not a problem, but maybe a point of attention. For example, I'm trying to write a series of articles about how to install and run Jenkins on Android. I know that's stupid, but whatever. And <laughs> the only job I found um, in my head was to get a Git repo uh, that has some C code sample. And I yep. chose a sample that does come uh, crunch you know, the, the pi decimals. And so it compiled that and then runs it. But the thing is, it needs a GCC compiler. And that's a dependency that you don't have in the default agent. So that's not a good idea for our use case. Maybe for next step. Let's, yeah. Uh, and, and this is where designing the demo and thinking, what do we want to show? This is the, and, and if we go back to the persona, and uh, so you want to see what Jenkins is. What can I show you? I, I just have five minutes to show you what it does, what it is. Elevator pitch, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is, and um, now you, what, what the example that you're giving, this could be an advanced one. Yep. There would be a second where we could invite the the person to, well, okay, you can do this and this by hand, or this is the automation of it. And uh, there you go. Thank you, Jean-Marc. So I think you got the general idea, uh, Ashutosh. Yes. So make it simple. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Jean-Marc, while you were there and talking, um, we talked a little bit about Gitpod. No, no, but I need your expertise. Uh, we talked a little bit about expertise. Gitpod. Come on, Jean-Marc, you I'm, did modify I'm lots enjoying... of repos. I'm I'm enjoying myself uh, experimenting things and Ashutosh gives me an excuse to yeah. <laughs> learn things. Yes, indeed. Go so ahead. It's what do working, you want to know? Yeah, it's working for them being within Gitpod without doing anything special. So what would be the advantages of Gitpodifying uh, the repo? I see one immediate one, so you don't have to enter the Docker Compose command. It just works all by itself, it starts yes. all by itself, I guess. But Ashutosh was also looking for a way to generate a different set of SSH keys for, you know, whenever you start the thing. And I thought um, of Gitpod pre hooks to do that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, I got the message. <laughs> no, um, I, I have a methodology problem with that. So we're already jumping on the tooling to automate something. Mm -hmm. We don't know what it is. See the point? So for me, git podifying or automating that uh, is already one step further. We know this can be done. Now, how are we going to do it? Uh, and I thought about that with the, with the keys. What I would suggest, or, or that we as a group here think about, uh, is uh, to have the initial setup run as one or several uh, bash files, scripts, before we actually do the Docker Compose up. And uh, so that we will update a couple of things, either in include files for the Docker Compose, or uh, this is the path I would uh, I would go. And so you can do it locally and in Gitpod. Don't forget that not everybody is going to use Gitpod. It will be the recommended way. Yes. But uh, so this is my point of view on uh, on it. But uh, I don't want to. Thanks, so. no, sir. Much clearer now. Thank you. Uh, at least for me. Uh, I should. Is it okay with you? Yes, yes. Because the the Gitpod uh, hook might be execute this bash file first, and off you go. But you're right, we have to think also um, about people that will use everything locally. So we have to have bash file that would work locally and then maybe in the future link that to a prehook within Gitpod. Am I right? I, yeah, I, I think I just would make one exception in the statement you made. Uh, it will work locally on a standard configuration in let's say a Mac or an Ubuntu machine yeah. that most of the people here have. But once you're going to try to make this work locally on a Windows machine, there you're going to run into troubles and, and we don't want to take care of them. We're going to say, if you don't want any risks, I want to be sure that it works, do it on Gitpod. This is our preferred demo yeah. environment. And Does that make sense? It would be yeah, of course, and it would be a nice bonus if it could work on a Windows with WSL2, for example, but I'll take care of that. Yeah, no, I, I am using that. I have no choice. You... It has to work on my machine. Oh, well, here, I need to be honest. It's, it's uh, six years that I didn't touch a Windows machine, so I don't even know where the front and the tail is. You know what? The company I work for forced me to use Windows or Ubuntu, and frankly, I had trouble choosing as I was using, uh, how do they call it? I forgot, a Linux distro, which is not handled by the system. So it is what it is. I am using Windows and sweating just about every other day. Ouch. Not the pain in the neck, but anyhow. So if it worked on the Windows way with WSL, uh, that would help me. Let, let's just do a sanity check here. Uh, Ashutosh, did I understand right that your working machine is Ubuntu? Yes, yes. Or it, it's Ubuntu. 
it's not a vagrant machine or something like no, that? No, no, no. Bare metal works. Oh. Okay, great. Good. And Bervia, Berviento, what, what is your home system or your base system? Mm, for my work, I usually use Windows, but uh, for my personal using Ouch. Linux. Linux, okay. What mm. distro? Uh, Fedora. Fedora. Oh, no, that exactly. should work. Ooh. That should work uh, too. Okay, so at least we here in this team have about the same configuration. I'm working with a, a Mac OS, which is a flavor of uh, of, of Unix, yeah, uh, yeah. BSD, yeah, and and I'm most of the examples work. Uh, and uh, on you're using a Nex eighty six sixty four Mac, am I right? It's not an R. ARM 64. It's a no, no, it's, it's, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm old cool. style. So, um, so uh, run of the mill, I think most of the people we're targeting have these kind of configuration, Fedora, Ubuntu, or the, 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 you have an interesting configuration, Bruno, but uh, we have the yeah. common denominator being Gitpod. On Gitpod, we're sure that it works. Um, uh, sounds good. So Jean-Marc, uh, for you, no need to git podify for the time being, or is there just an advantage of having no command to enter? Uh, at this stage, if you're asking me at this stage, yeah. don't do it. Don't do any okay, automation thank you. that we we have. Otherwise, I will start the environment and I, will, I have plenty of things that start uh, all over the place and, and we're still experimenting so i want really to do it in a controlled way okay let's go docker compose up i can uh, i know when i need to watch otherwise uh, right this is my my point of view at this stage okay. we know how to automate it but let's do it yeah keep way. it for another step later on thank you jean marc you agree with that um, yes okay i agree okay don't don't hesitate to chime in in, in Berriento too, because uh, I'm 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 really have fun with this project, so I'm a uh, lot of good ideas. Uh, I'm sorry, but we have an administrative point uh, to address. Uh, I think we all agree that we lost Said a few weeks ago, and we had chosen this time slot so that it could accommodate with Said uh, agenda. So, uh, do you think we should find another time slot for this weekly meeting? Uh, I could make another doodle, or should we keep this one? I'm okay with this one, or if uh, or on any other, I can manage. I'm not that busy these days, except with <laughs> the project. I hope. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <of course. laughs> Bervianto, is this time okay or you're still at work, right? Yeah, I still do. And does it work or? Uh... But it's okay. You're sure? Yeah. We, we won't see your supervisor, supervisor suddenly appearing behind you with a big stick. Yeah. <laughs> I, I see the picture. <laughs> anyway, Jean-Marc, what about you? I'm okay. I'm okay as oh. long as I don't need to go to MOT to get my car through it. So uh, it took more time than expected. Ouch. Okay. Uh, so fine. No need to create another doodle. Then uh, we're all good. Um, okay. um, we're approaching the end of the meeting. Yeah, go ahead, Jean-Marc. Bruno, uh, did you talk about the midterm presentation? I'm afraid I haven't addressed that yet. Let's go. Uh, we can eventually raise that next week, but uh, here. Uh, uh, Ashutosh was not at the... Uh, Unfortunately, no, yeah. Uh, did you watch the, the recording? Hours. Yes, uh, I the watched the recording. Okay, so you know that uh, end of June, uh, there will be a, a presentation and demo. It's you 10 know minutes. That? Yes. And now you're scared like hell. <laughs> yeah, no? 
a little bit i am <laughs> okay this is what i wanted to lead in uh we don't need to discuss it right now but uh bruno uh for next week's meeting this will be a very important topic so we need to discuss the content what how where how do we uh, help ashutosh to prepare it and I need to know also, but this is my org admin hat. Hat. Are you available? Uh, what? Uh, don't remember when was the date, but we can discuss that during our one. Yeah. I was proposing. I don't even remember. I think it was uh, July sixth. So it's not end of June, so beginning of July. Yeah. I don't remember, man. I'm forgetting. I'm I getting too old. I think you proposed around the 14th of July, then some people would not be available. No, no, 14, then... 14th of July, this is where we need to give the assessment. Oh, and, okay. And uh, the, the presentation is part of the assessment, so it would be... Uh, uh, before, but uh, one of the contributor had exams. Yeah. yeah. And Ashutosh, do you have exams too? No, no, I don't. I had my exams. Okay. You're available on July on July six. Yes, I'll be available. I may have college, uh, so I'll have to. I I can skip a few days. I don't mind. It's not that important. Skipping college. Well, I didn't hear that. <laughs> didn't hear that. So no. Um, here, uh, Bruno, uh, this is an yeah. important topic that we need to discuss, either offline, at least yeah. at the next coordination meeting here, so that we we can guide Ashutosh on the content, what, how, and also help him to prepare it. Yeah, of course. And I should just to be clear, you'll go back to college uh, in the coming weeks. No, it's uh, it should open up in July. The date is has not come yet. Hmm. Okay. okay. It will but now be... you're on holiday. Yes, uh, now I'm in holiday on holidays. It will open in July second week, I think. I'm not sure about it. They haven't given the date yet. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you, Ishtosh. Jean-Marc, anything else before we wrap up? No, I already stole quite a lot of time. No, I don't have anything. No. More. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Ashutosh Bervianto, any feedback, input questions? Uh, no. Um, just that I, I probably will be available at 6 uh, July, so... Okay, cool. Good to know. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so, thanks a lot for your work. Uh, I do like being that kind of progress. Yep. And don't hesitate to get in touch with us on Element, Matrix, whatever, Gitter, uh, yep. if you get stuck or want our review. Don't forget to tag us in the GitHub yep. issues, uh, PRs, so that we can... Uh, chime in and or, see what we can do yeah or on gitter uh, ashutosh or the others if you want me to react to something uh let me know uh, uh tag me i have too much things going on here uh and and uh, uh i'm 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 not a millennial so i i don't <laughs> I, I i can't cope with information coming all over the place so uh, yes, please uh, let me know. I apologize for that. But... I'll tag you, I'll tag you. <laughs> Otherwise, and insist if you don't see the, the reaction. I, I say I've seen it, I'll deal um, with the question also. Otherwise, uh, sorry okay. for that. Uh, okay, Bruno. Already one minute late, so I propose that we wrap it up. Thanks a lot for your time, folks, and see you on Gitter and next week and in the yeah. office hours whatever yeah. <laughs> have a office. wonderful end of day bye -bye. okay bye bye okay. bye everyone. thank you